Now, Claire, you hurt my feelings in uh, the prep call by saying that ETFs are boring. But uh, you have a good way of explaining that. Uh, if ETFs are boring, how do you express their value to clients and, and your use of them to clients? Just touching on what David said, um, in our boardroom, we got rid of our Vanguard chart that gave us 30 years of ups and downs. Apologies to Vanguard. <laughs> um, we've got pictures of our clients because it's all about them. And it's what, is, what are they passionate about? They're passionate about their puppy dogs, their grandchildren, their trips, selling the home, buying the boat, whatever it is that is they're passionate about. Um, and I think that that's a consistent theme across what we've been saying and, and an earlier advisor who was on an earlier panel. In terms of ETFs are boring, a lot of my clients have managed their wealth and I might be the first or second advisor they've ever dealt with. Um, or they've built their wealth through their own enterprises, through their business, and they realise they've got a significant legacy and they should be doing something smart with it and they recognise their own limitations, so they're seeking advice. And... For those who have dealt with their own money and been buying and selling shares and may or may not have great results to show, a bit like a gambler, they'll only talk about their winners, not their losses. Um, and for those who have never invested before, what are they aware of? It's the buying and selling. It's the Alan Kohler on TV at night. It's the, the headlines that come through throughout the day. And it's the stories. The journalists give us those stories every morning. Um, and so ETFs, oh, you've got the index. Well, that doesn't sound very exciting. All I can get is the average. I can't outperform if I've got an index. Um, the really great fund managers, um, the really good portfolio, and it's not the fund managers, the portfolio managers, the good ones are really good. You know, when you go to their, their, um, their, their, their presentations, they'll talk about a few vignettes you know, we picked this stock two years ago. We knew it was going to ride a bit. This is why we chose it and came th it came through for us. And they can talk, they can tell the vignette of the story. And the really good ones will then pick out ones they didn't pick right. They'll acknowledge that they made a mistake because, let's face it, they've all made mistakes and it's whether they're open about sharing that. Whereas ETFs, it's boring. And, that, and in a way, I, I say to the ETF providers, embrace boring. Because I'm not trying to, as um, we said earlier, I'm not trying to beat a performance of 10% or 8% or whatever it is. I'm trying to make sure that we can fund the holidays every year, that we can have the lifestyle that we've decided is appropriate for us. And that for each client is their benchmark. So it's not some arbitrary beat the ASX 200, it's I need X amount every year for the next 30 years. And I'm gonna take out lumpy sums for the weddings, for my kids, and helping the education of my grandchildren. And I'm gonna take the whole family somewhere wonderful. And so those big chunky amounts come out, can we still afford the lifestyle? Can we still get a photo on the wall of whatever it is we've agreed is the goal? And so the boringness of ETFs is actually, um, again, we get, you know, the advisors in the room know this, we, we know all the technicality and the, under, and the, the slides that were um, in previous presentations. Clients don't care. They don't care about sharp ratios and alpha and beta and whether it's smart or dumb. I mean, if you say that something's smart beta, they'll say, well, where's the dumb beta? Like, it's just, <laughs> they don't care about that. They care, can we hit our goals? I've got a lot of engineers as clients and they will read. I've got a couple of, I know a couple of advisors who run away from engineers as clients. Again, I'm, I'm a technical geek from way back so I again embrace it but it's that we're not going to the casino for the excitement if a client wants the excitement the thrill of the ups and downs take a portion buy and sell see how you go I've got a couple of clients who a few years ago rang me up and said I need some money for a startup and I said oh what's it in I said oh no it's in the bubble I can't tell you okay fair enough and we structured the you know the nature of how they were going to invest and where the money was coming from and they wouldn't tell me what it was in. And I, I, know, uh, you know, I know their background. And I said, oh, is it in a robo-advice provider? And there was silence. It's like, yes. But you'll still be my advisor. And again, this is where the advisors bring value. Robo-advisors are going to be using ETFs. It makes sense. Smart advisors are using ETFs because then you can show where you outperform, where the, you either pick an active asset manager to complement or you have a strategy that underlies it or the buying and selling, the timing and the, you know, the themes. You know, when I look at a, a traditional client that comes in with 30 or 40 stocks, it's all the traditional names. They'll all be the names we know. 
I can give a client a portfolio of 12 and I can set, they, the clients know exactly why every single investment, why every ETF is in there and what it's doing and what's the strategy of getting out when the certain market conditions occur, why, you know, what is our time frame for this. So it's not boring at all because clients understand it because they know their portfolio and we're engaging on those, those really interesting economic themes that actually we're all doing but maybe we're not having those conversations with clients.